so thanks everyone for joining in uh, we are airtel uh, the topic for today's uh, talk is how the metadata management platform which is data hub has become the bedrock of data mesh at airtel uh, the speakers for the day are going to be shikhar and i shikhar is uh, the lead engineer i am a product manager looking at the transformation of our data platform uh, we at airtel are amongst the top three mobile service providers across the world, our India subscriber base is more than the entire US population. Just to give you a brief into how, what our data journey has been, until 2018, we were our data was siloed. Uh, it was fragmented. Since 2018, we started centralizing the data into a centralized data lake. Uh, our... Uh, Compute looks like uh, that daily we process around 10,000 plus jobs, 30 plus petabytes of data. However, over time we've realized that centralization comes at a cost and because of which we've moved towards uh, a data mesh decentralized architecture. Uh, I'm sure the audience of, uh, of the talk would be aware that there is uh, what the principles of data mesh are, but uh, just to emphasize, it essentially means that uh, the ownership of data should rely with the producers of the data, yeah. which is essentially data domain ownership. Uh, the second principle is that data should be treated as a, treated as a product. We'll go and deep dive into what this essentially means. It also means that data governance should not be an afterthought, but uh, the responsibility of governance lies both with the data domains as well as a centralized uh, organization. And finally, that these principles need to be upholded by a, a, a platform which is able to provide a self-serve mechanism to various, uh, to the users of the data platform so that they are able to orchestrate their data journeys. Now, uh, just to focus on what data as a product essentially means, it has certain different dimensions, specifically that the data should be discoverable, data should be addressable, it should be trustworthy, self-describing, and secure. Uh, it is on these dimensions that Data Hub plays a very, very critical role to be the bedrock on providing uh, the requisite governance in place through its metadata management. And we'll talk uh, uh, about each of these dimensions, uh, describing it on how Airtel is leveraging Data Hub to provide the same. But before that, Shikhar will take you through uh, what our tech stack looks like. Shikhar? Sure. Thank you guys for joining in. So let's start with something like a user journey. See, uh, so this particular, <clears throat> so let me start by start explaining the architecture in terms of first the, how the user journey looks like. So after, you know, you once you're part of any domain or a system, which is the one of the principles of uh, uh, data mesh. So you will come in as, you know, proposal, you, they, taking in a proposal for a particular data product. So once you propose a requirement of a data product, so the next step that you would want to do, you would want to create the data product, uh, right? So creating the data product essentially means you would go to first step of you know, ingesting the raw data uh, from outside sources, writing into some storage, right? And once that initial data is written, you would, 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 you would want to transform. So after transforming the data, uh, what you will essentially get is a data product. Then you will have a query layer, which is there for the consumption of the uh, consumer, which is one of the personas in the data mesh. So, uh, so in order to implement this particular flow, what you need is a set of tools. So what do you see here are certain tools, which are, you know, what, which we have built in house and there are certain tools, which, you know, we have taken from the open source community. So in order to implement this particular flow, what do you see, we start with a hierarchy management tool, which is essentially where you go ahead and create a domains, define what, what roles and what people are, so are, on, are in those roles. So then as you say, in, as part of the user journey, there is something called a business proposal, which is there, which is you proposing 
a data product in a certain domain system. Okay, so there is a there is a internal tool which is BRF which does this, takes in the requirement, formalizes it, and you know, uh, you know, justifies the need of a data product in any uh, any of the domain system. So then what you're going to do is like, as you see in the use of low that you need to ingest, right? So then there is an ingestion platform, which is there, which we call ICF ingestion configuration forms, we call it. So, uh, so there you can, you know, drive your ingestion just by certain configurations, right? So one of the, uh, one of the primary drivers of uh, thoughts behind the uh, platform is that it should be very easy for users to do things that they want to do. So we have kept things very simple so that your ingestion is all configuration driven. So once you've ingested uh, right into a particular storage via configuration, then you can go ahead and use DBT. That the, 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 the USP of DBT here is that you, we are letting people create transformations using query. So this DBT enables us to use simple queries to do, to create complex pipelines, right? So moving ahead. So, uh, once you've seen the tools we use, uh, let's also talk about a bit uh, about the core architecture which there is. So basically, so using the tools which are there, and uh, you know we try, you try integrating streams, APIs, files, DBs, right, uh, uh, through our tools to uh, to uh, to architecture uh, which you see in front. So we have a certain workflow manager which is Airflow. So whatever jobs which are ingestion jobs, either it be ingestion jobs or those are data bottling uh, transformation jobs. Those are all handled by, uh, handled by a workflow manager airflow. Okay. So then you see what we, what we try to do is like we have, uh, so uh, one of the things which you see above is federated query layer, right? That query layer is being enabled by the combination of this multi-tenant distributed gateway, which is SkyUbi. Okay. And your, uh, your, your query engine, which is Trino. Okay. So similarly for the transformation engine, the, the DBT via the gateway talks with the transformation engine, which is Spark. Okay. So what we are doing here is this is the underlying tech stack where the user can query, they can schedule their uh, transformations, their, uh, their ingestions uh, via this architecture. All right. So what you see on the very right is are the reverse ETL application, which is a custom home built thing. Then you have the dashboard. Uh, you can build dashboards using Tableau, and there is Jupyter for ad hoc querying, which uh, routes through Trino. So we're now bringing us to the very important part, which here is is the governance layer, right? Which we feel Data Hub, Hub is our centerpiece there. So we enable, uh, you know, uh, we enable governance uh, through certain certain actions that we do. For one of the things is like we do data discovery and lineage via Data Hub. We also do data quality via, via our own custom code, but we want to portray that quality into data hub. And then what we want to do is like, <laughs> there are, see, there are, there are platform matrices, which are there. Okay. Then there are data matrices, which are there. And then there are, there are compute matrices, which are there. And there are a lot of SLIs, which you need for governing. So governance is basically, you want to know. So once you know, you want to do, you want to control better. So you, we use this, uh, our ELK monitoring stack along with some ticketing solution to, to, uh, to facilitate governance. See, we also, you know, you want to use, we actually did a, did a strong project around how you can control the data access via using data. Hub. So we have for access, we use Apache Ranger. The Apache Ranger can talk to uh, your data hub for specific metadata, which can control who accesses what based on the tags and the, for example, the PA tags, which are there. So, so in, in a traditional fashion, in the older data lakes, it, uh, Apache Ranger used to communicate to things like Atlas, but in place of that, we have data up here. And one of the uh, other pieces that we have here is cost measurement that we want to do as part of the computational governance that we want to bring in. So basically this is uh, something which you know by the name FinOps. So, and all this is, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, enabled via over an elastic compute layer. So, which gives us all the flexibility that we need. Over to you, Vivek. Thanks. Uh, so, as I said, we'll now go on to uh, showcasing how uh, the different dimensions of a data product are being covered by, uh, by Data Hub. For example, here, uh, we, what we've done is that in our ingestion journeys, uh, the information that is required uh, 
to be ingested. All of that needs to be cataloged and all business descriptions are to be made present as a prerequisite for anybody to do those ingestions. We do understand that getting metadata in can be a challenge and therefore we've, uh, we've uh, knowingly, willingly uh, put in uh, a, a kind of friction in place so that governance essentially becomes a long-term play. Uh, as you can see on the screen, there's data hub that needs to be get referred and the URN essentially then gets reflected in, in this form. Uh, whatever metadata which is associated with the data which is getting ingested also gets reflected in the data that essentially has gotten ingested into our data lake. As Shikhar was saying, uh, we want to make data more discoverable and hence uh, we've what, we, what we've done is used uh, the uh, DBT as a transformation engine uh, because all of its lineage essentially gets reflected onto Data Hub. Uh, data Hub has all connectors uh, to provide this visibility. Uh, similarly, we want data to be trustworthy and that's where Again, the assertions which a user is able to specify in DBT uh, gets reflected, the trends, et cetera, of those assertions get reflected here. Similar, the way DBT provides assertions capability for, uh, for transformation, similarly uh, for ingestion, even though we have a custom tool, we have implemented a custom assertions so that there is a library of assertions that the users can use both at record level and at aggregate level. And all those assertions also are reflected onto Data Hub the way you are able to see on the screen. The next dimension of a data product is that it needs to be self-describing. Uh, one of the reasons, again, that we went with DBT was that there was a, uh, the, the, code or the script that a user writes for doing transformations gets visible on Data Hub, uh, which you are able to see on the left part of the screen. Uh, the sec the On the right part of the screen is what the stewards of the data, another critical role that's there uh, in Data Mesh uh, is that of a steward to maintain the uh, understandability of the data that their domain generates and the responsibility of the doer, uh, of the steward is present here. Also the roles, et cetera, are very tightly coupled to the data products that get generated, which essentially get reflected as the owners of the data product. So if there are any queries, et cetera, which are related to it, uh, users can essentially know whom they need to contact. <clears throat> Another dimension was about uh, creating secure data products and uh, for access control, as Shikhar was saying, we're using, uh, we're going to use a tag based approach. Tags is essentially what data hub provides as a mechanism to put in metadata about the metadata. And uh, we would be leveraging this information to define tag based policies in Ranger. Finally, it's about making the data usable. And here, uh, one of the challenges that uh, as an enterprise uh, organization that we face is that we want to empower our business users to do uh, exploratory data analysis. And given the volume of data that we have, it essentially is going to be big data. Uh, and uh, there is a, a, a gap that we needed to fill in, in terms of uh, the SQL proficiency that the users have to interact with their data. It is over here that we are using Data Hub for uh, putting in all the business context, which is through catalog enrichment. Uh, using Elastic, another key stone in our data stack that uh, we are using for various purposes uh, to leverage uh, one of its large language models to create a knowledge graph, which we then use to pass on uh, the identified metadata to answer users' queries uh, to chat GPT, and finally getting a SQL so that the users can run on top of Oracle to do their exploratory data analysis. So this, again, is where Data Hub plays a very pivotal role for us to make data usable. 
uh, we just want to thank the Acryl team uh, for supporting us in this journey. We've been in this journey for the past one year. And even though we are in the open source version, the Acryl team has been very, very helpful in answering all our queries and coming back to us uh, with, with solutions. So thanks again. Thanks, Miko. Thank you. Oh, Yay. Thank you so much. All right. So thank you, Airtel. Let me go ahead and put uh, back on the screen here. And so I thought it was a question in the chat. If you guys could go ahead and address that. I did see one question. Thank you guys for that. And we'll share the recording and presentation. Love, love, love the case study. So thank you guys. And thank you for coming from India. I know it's, I know it's late over there. So thanks everybody for joining. That was awesome.